Hey there, YouTube. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about living in Danville, California. We're gonna break it down into the top five pros, and then we're gonna take a look at the flip side and the top five cons of living in Danville, California. If you stick to the end, I'm also gonna share with you three places that you probably wanna visit if you come take a look at Danville, California. So if you have any interest in learning what it is to live in Danville, California, stick with me. I'm Lisa Peck and I'm a local real estate agent with Explorers Bay Homes and Compass. Today we're going to break it down into the top five pros and the top five cons of living in Danville, California. So if you're new to my channel and you're interested in getting honest information about either living in Danville or the Tri-Valley area and its real estate, stick with me. Hit the subscribe button as well as the bell and you'll get notified every time that I put out new information. So let's get after it. Let's talk about the top five pros and the top five cons of living in Danville, California. Before we get into it, I just want to share a few things about Danville so you have some perspective. Danville has a population of about 44,000 people as of census 2020, and it covers 19 square miles of space. Danville, California has been named the safest place to live in 2021. This is not its first year. I'll put the link down below so you can check out the article. In addition to the safety that it offers the residents of Danville, it's come to be known as one of the best places to raise a family here in the Bay Area. Okay, so my number one pro for living in Danville, California is that there's so much to do so close by. You can get to Napa if you want to taste some wines in under an hour. You can get to Lake Tahoe and go skiing in three hours. You can get to Carmel by the Sea or visit the aquarium in Monterey in under two hours. If you need to get to Yosemite, that's only four hours away. If you're feeling a city vibe, to get to San Francisco, it's only 35 minutes away if there's no traffic. If there's traffic, it's gonna take a little while longer. But you can go there, you can enjoy the arts, take a stroll in Chinatown and have some of the best Chinese food that the Bay Area has to offer. Even though Danville is a small town, you've got proximity to some of the best pro sports teams around. You could go see a football game and see the San Francisco 49ers. You could see the Golden State Warriors play basketball. You could also see the Giants play baseball, or maybe you like hockey and you go see the San Jose Sharks. Okay, so if you want to stay local in Danville, there's also tons of things that you can do. We have one of the most amazing downtowns in the East Bay. It exudes charm and character throughout. We don't really have big box stores in Danville. It's mostly small and mom and pa shops. Danville has 14 parks and one of them is Mount Diablo, which is just under 4,000 feet of elevation. You can hike there, you can bike there, you can do just about anything there. One of my personal favorites is the Iron Horse Trail. The Iron Horse Trail is 32 miles long and it goes from all the way from down in Pleasanton all the way up to Concord and it stops off in right in the middle of downtown Danville. The Danville Library downtown is one of the most trafficked libraries in all of Contra Costa County. Okay, so the flip side of all of this is that because there's so much to see and do in Danville, the traffic can get really hairy. So I suggest that if you're going maybe to a ball game or you're trying to get downtown, you consider taking Bay Area Rapid Transit. We call it BART. I'll put a link down below so that you can see exactly what city's BART service is. We don't actually have a BART station in Danville, but we do have one up north in Walnut Creek or down south in Dublin, Pleasanton. Either way, both of them are usually hard to find a spot to park. So what we like to do is go to the Danville Park and Ride. You just put your car there and you take a bus over to Walnut Creek and you catch the bar into the city or wherever it is that you want to go. Okay, so the number two pro for living in Danville is schools. Let's start off with public schools. Danville has some of the best public schools in all of California. San Ramon Valley Unified School District actually has their offices in Danville and Danville itself is home to two high schools, as well as three middle schools and six elementary schools. 
We also have three private schools if you prefer that. San Ramon Valley Unified School District gets an A plus on Niche for its schools. I'll put a link to Niche down, down below in the description. Okay, so the flip side to that or the con is that the schools are really tough. Those kids who do well academically absolutely thrive in San Ramon Valley Unified School District. My suggestion or hack for that is don't just look at a website and take a look at a number and decide what school you want your child to go to. Dig in a little deeper. I always suggest that clients and friends go and actually talk to the school, talk to the administrators, talk to the teachers, and even more importantly, see if you can't talk to some of the parents. You'll have an immediate feeling about whether or not uh, your philosophies and educational needs align with that that the school has to offer. Okay, number three pro to living in Danville, California is the weather. Kind of a no-brainer, right? Actually, we have significantly better weather than San Francisco. San Francisco tends to be a little bit cooler and a little bit more wet. Uh, but Danville is very dry and very sunny. We get our hot season from June until October, and the hottest month that we see is in July with an average temp of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Our cool season runs from the end of November until the middle of February, and the average high is 59 degrees. Our coldest month is January, and sometimes it gets down around 41 degrees during the day, but the mornings can even hit freezing at 32, 30, anywhere between 30 and 34 degrees. One of the toughest things to get used to about living in Danville is the difference between the morning and the afternoon. We get our heat from the sun, so when you wake up, it could be 30 degrees out, and by the middle of the day, it could possibly be 60 or 70 degrees. So we do get those large swings, which is why everybody knows wear layers. So that as it gets warmer throughout the day, as the sun comes out, you can just shed a layer and be completely comfortable. We get the most amount of rain during the month of February. So we get up to an average of about eight days where it rains in February, and that is our wettest month. So the flip side or con to that is no secret to anyone. California does have droughts during the summer. These can cause wildfires. So one of the hacks that we recommend is twofold. One is to make sure that you talk to your insurance agent about possibly getting uh, wildfire insurance. The other thing is to make sure that when you're looking at a home, you're very familiar with the hazard map, which should be able to tell you if you're in a high fire hazard zone or a very high fire hazard zone or no fire hazard at all. Okay, so the number four pro to living in Danville, California is activities. You can do just about anything, just about any day of the year in Danville, California. We have many golf courses. There's three local golf courses here in Danville. We also have tennis. There's four public tennis courts. We have hiking just about everywhere you look. Another activity that Danvillians love to do is to swim. Many Homes in Danville actually have their own private swimming pool in back. And some of the homes that don't have private pools, they have shared pools within their developments. Another popular activity around Danville is soccer, which is the home of Mustang. Mustang Soccer Club has roughly 4,700 students a year coming to learn soccer from their amazingly talented crew over at Mustang. Back riding is a big thing too. When you get to the eastern part of Danville, you'll find that there are quite a few stables where people store their, uh, or people house their uh, horses so that they can go and ride them on the weekends. There's a farmer's market in downtown Danville every Saturday from nine to one where local farmers come and bring their goods, whether it's flowers or fruits and vegetables, sometimes even baked goods, as well as coffee. Every once in a while, you'll see a knife sharpener show up. Biking. There is a ton of biking in Danville. You'll see it along the streets. You'll see it at Mount Diablo. Bikers are everywhere, and they usually travel in packs. Just about anything that you can do outdoors, you can do here in Danville. We have six community parks with dog parks in them, batting cages, bocce ball courts, 
sand volleyball, soccer, baseball, walking trails, and ponds. It's hard to find a flip side or a con to that, right? But if I have to find one, I would say that people's biggest complaint is that sometimes there's a lot of bikers on the main roads, and so when you're driving, it can be um, scary if you're not looking around everywhere because there are a lot of bikers. Most bikers follow the rules of the road, and bikers and motorists have come to have mutual respect for each other. Okay, the last pro for living in Danville, number five, is home appreciation. Most people who bought their homes 10, 15 years ago have made over a million dollars on appreciation in their home. Danville residents have experienced tremendous appreciation. If I take a look at the house values in December 2020 and compare it to the house values in Danville in December 2021, they have risen 31.8%. That's right, folks, 31.8% in one year. Obviously, the flip side and con to this is quite obvious. It's really tough to get started buying a home. And one hack for this is to be able to take a look at homes that aren't quite yet on the market or maybe will never come on the market. These are called off-market listings. You need to find a realtor that you trust and someone who's willing to stay connected to all the realtors and find off-market homes for you. These homes will sell oftentimes before you get to see them on Zillow or Redfin or Compass.com. Okay, so before I forget, I'm gonna let you know the top three places that you need to stop by that are gonna give you a great feel for what it's like to live in Danville. Number one, stop by Pete's Coffee. I'm gonna put the link down below. It's on Railroad Avenue. It's 435 Railroad Avenue in downtown Danville. This is a great way to start your day. I've never been there when there hasn't been a ton of people. It is always buzzing and it's a great way to start your day at Pete's Coffee. After that, hop on over to Black Hawk Museum. I'll put a link down below. Black Hawk Museum is famously known for its custom car collection, but it's not just custom cars. They have a great exhibit for China. They have a Western lore exhibit, an African art exhibit, as well as an animal exhibit. Check out the link down below. It's really pretty cool. So to finish off your day, I'd say head over to the Pennington Fair back in downtown Danville. You can get an amazing meal. They have a fabulous wine list. They also have some pretty great cocktails that they're really well known for, like a pear teeny. Yes, it's a pear and a martini, a pear flavored martini. So check it out, the peasant in the pear. I'll put a link down below. So what's your favorite thing to do in Danville, California? Drop me a message down below and let me know what your favorite thing to do is in Danville, California. So hopefully you got a great feel for what it's like to live in Danville, California. Like I said before, I'm a local real estate agent and I'm shooting a ton of content about what it's like to live in Danville as well as the Tri-Valley area. So if you'd like to learn more, just hit the subscribe button and click on the bell.